Film auteur Spike Lee, regarded as one of the best filmmakers in the last few decades, has created over 30 films in his career. His films are known for straying away from traditional Hollywood methods and implementing unusual yet surprisingly effective cinematic techniques, such as the double dolly, breaking the fourth wall, and usage of real or candid footage in fictional films. Spike's inventive talents are also very prominent when listening to the musical aspects of his films. Whether he's juxtaposing various genres together in one film, or choosing a style of music that heavily contrasts with the environment on screen, Spike's films consistently contain effective and impactful music. In 1989, Spike released Do the Right Thing, his most critically acclaimed film to date, and arguably the film that most effectively uses music. Taking place in Bedside, Brooklyn on the hottest day of the year, do the Right Thing tells the story of racial tension within a mostly black community. The story follows Mookie, a delivery boy at an Italian pizzeria as he goes about his day, encountering friends, fights, and trying to earn a living. Music plays an essential role in the film, starting from the opening titles through the ending credits. Do the Right Thing blends the music of two traditionally African American genres, jazz and hip hop. As an inherently rebellious genre, hip-hop was born from sampling and reworking of other songs to create a contemporary piece of music that, since its creation, has been embraced by younger generations. As writer Guthrie Ramsey states, early 90s films such as Boys in the Hood and Juice utilize hip-hop to establish an image of black youth, a one-dimensional portrayal. Lee himself contests these films, stating, these inner city homeboy reviews create a world in which all black people lived in ghettos, did crack, and rapped. Much to Spike's frustrations, he utilizes hip hop in Do the Right Thing to not only portray a more authentic community, but to portray a plethora of emotions and meaning through use of rap. In regards to African American musical traditions, jazz is another genre that has been historically celebrated by African Americans for years. So it seems quite fitting for Lee to juxtapose the two historically black genres together to prepare audiences for the film they are about to watch. Victoria E. Johnson discusses the opening sequence of Do the Right Thing as the perfect example of this musical juxtaposition. The film begins with an alto sax blues rendition of Lift Up Every Voice and Sing, a song traditionally referred to as the Black National Anthem. The song abruptly ends before transitioning into Fight the Power, a fast-paced rap song by Public Enemy. In the background we can hear snippets of various woodwind instruments inserted into the song as samples. This blending of genres signifies and celebrates the talents of black musicians, two black American musical traditions, historic jazz and contemporary rap, are juxtaposed within the same space, says Johnson. Played individually, Fight the Power could easily be interpreted as an anthem against oppression but the inclusion of Lift Up Every Voice makes it exclusively an African-American anthem against oppression due to the historic value of these two genres. The film uses this comparison between genres to establish the overall theme of Do the Right Thing and primes the audience for a film that will speak double truths on racial oppression and the African-American experience. Ramsey points out that the placement of specific music in each scene can be contributed to making this film so effective in its ability to successfully reinforce themes of conflict, community, and resisting oppression. The entirety of music within Do the Right Thing can be divided into three categories as follows. Non-diegetic orchestrated jazz. Diegetic R&B played by Mr. Senior Love Daddy. And public enemies fight the power. Placement of orchestrated jazz highlights the conflict and tension happening within the neighborhood by oddly emphasizing scenes of strife using a cinematic score. Smiley's speech about Malcolm and Martin in front of the church. My name is Smiley. This is M -M 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 Malcolm. Act. 
Pedo telling Sal of his distaste of the neighborhood. I hate this freaking place. I detest it like a sickness. You, you detest this place like a sickness? I mean, that's what I really hate. That's hate. And Domer yelling at mother sister are all scenes that utilize a cinematic jazz score. Don't stare at me. The evil eye doesn't work on me. Mother sister, you've been talking about me for 18 years. What have I ever done to you? you Orchestrated music is traditional for most films, but placing it alongside these small moments of strife creates uneasiness for the audience, as well as highlights the tension. To establish a sense of community and geography of bed Brooklyn, R&B music by radio DJ Mr. Senior Love Daddy plays throughout the neighborhood. When DeMayer wakes up, inside Mookie's apartment, and in the Korean grocery store, Where's the middle highlight? Where is the Miller highlight? No more highlight. You look like Each instance we hear R&B music, it is apparent that it's diegetic, being played through a radio, thus establishing that that scene takes place in bed therefore emphasizing community. R&B is played in every cultural space except Sal's Pizzeria, Ramsey states, therefore creating the idea that Sal's is unconnected or not a part of the community, a plot point that later leads to conflict. Oftentimes, the music is accompanied by Samuel L. Jackson's character preaching about togetherness and loving thy neighbor. Very fitting, as love is in his character's name. The fact that the music being played is R&B should also be noted, as R&B is a middle ground between rap and jazz, and is stylistically in between the two genres. Lastly, the use of Fight the Power, played through Radio Rahim's boombox, works to become a motif or reminder of the fight against oppression. Ramsey argues that the repetitive use allows Lee to manipulate audience members of different subject positions to relate to the musical conventions and political message of the piece because they understand what it means cinematically. Fight the Power is played as diegetic music and follows Radio Rahim wherever he goes, most notably within the scene where he gives his love versus hate speech. While cinematic jazz score is used to show scenes regarding hate, R&B is placed around scenes of love, making Fight the Power even more important, as it acknowledges the conflict between love and hate within the other categories of film music, as well as the plot. Music has always been an essential part of Spike Lee's films, consistently contributing to their success. The use of jazz and Do the Right Thing simultaneously represents the traditional African-American tradition, as well as the style of music most associated with Brooklyn. The film serves as a milestone of musical juxtaposition in Lee's career, through the implementation of jazz, hip-hop, and R&B, as well as their consecutive reinforcement of neighborhood tension, geographical space, and racial oppression. Here is a film in which Lee's musical efforts are organized and executed perfectly, resulting in his most coherent and meaningful piece of cinema.